Well, the U.S. bishops have also launched their annual Natural Family Planning Week this week. The theme this year is Marriage, One Flesh, Given and Received. NFP Week coincides with the anniversary of the 1968 papal letter Humanae Vitae written by Pope St. Paul VI. It provides clear teaching on God's plan for married love and the transmission of life. And we go now to Teresa Notari, Assistant Director of the USCCB's Natural Family Planning Program. Teresa, great to have you on today. Uh, for those who may not be familiar, tell us a little bit more about natural family planning and, and how it's different from contraception. Sure. Uh, natural family planning, a lot of people don't understand what it is. That's the umbrella title for those methods of family planning that are based on a couple learning the biomarkers of the fertile phase of the woman's menstrual cycle. So it is not a guessing game. It is real information that a woman progressively watches her body every day and records whatever signs she's um, paying attention to. Uh, that is different from the very first natural method, which was uh, the scientific method, which was the calendar rhythm method. That information was based on uh, an algorithm, a theory of when a woman would ovulate. So yeah, NFP methods are very different and they fall into different categories. So you may have heard of the Billings ovulation method, for example, that tracks one of the signs of fertility or the symptothermal method, or even the more uh, recent ones called symptohormonal. They also make use of a fertility monitor to help the couple identify the fertile phase of the woman's menstrual cycle. And Teresa, you know, what are the benefits there for married couples in order to use NFP? Well, the benefits are many, and there's plenty of research that backs this up. So, for example, because you're not using any drugs or devices, there are no harmful side effects for any of these methods. And the methods actually teach people how to understand their fertility, both individually, uh, the husband as a man, the woman as a woman, uh, the wife as a woman, and, uh, and combined uh, at what their fertility means as a couple. Because when a woman is fertile, she's really only fertile for 12 to 24 hours one day in her menstrual cycle. But she also has other bodily markers of fertility that facilitate her getting pregnant. And that could easily, combined with her husband's fertility, allow for like a six-day window of fertility that if they were attempting to achieve a pregnancy, they would target their conjugal relations for that time. If they discerned prayerfully that they this wasn't a time to try to attempt a pregnancy, they would just simply abstain from having uh, conjugal re relations at that time. So no drugs or devices are used, no sterilization, um, none of that happens. Nothing happens that would interfere with God's design for their marriage. Yeah, and so useful. Um, why is this initiative, why is it so important to, you, to the USCCB? Well, it's very important because we have, as a church, been holding up these beautiful teachings of how God made men and women, what the nature of marriage is is really like according to God's plan. This is over 2,000 years of us understanding what God has given us. We, we understand these gifts from both uh, sacred scripture as well as um, um, sacred tradition with a capital T. Uh, over the centuries, we've understood what the meaning of marriage is. And marriage is is this unique relationship that shows the communion of persons between the husband and wife in um, the fullest way possible, because they are the ones who God has called to create the one flesh union. And that union is so magnificent that it can give birth to new life. God actually calls married couples to share in his procreative um, capacity. So, uh, so, so this is at the heart of the family and at the heart of um, God showing his love through the married couple. And of course, as Christians, we believe that since Christ redeemed all in humanity, he redeemed the sexual relationship as well. He redeemed marriage. And so the marriage between two baptized Christians is an example of Christ's love um, for his people, for the church. And you know, it's not just an example. The Lord dwells 
in that marital relationship. And so it's not just the husband and wife, it's the husband and wife with Jesus as Christians. Uh, uh, we also talk about natural marriage. It would be the husband and wife with the Lord God uh, in their midst. This is not just any relationship. And if we if we hold these beliefs, well, the church has never been against the idea that husband and wife have to discern how to plan their families. Uh, as long as that's done in justice and in seriousness, uh, it is a, a reasonable. In fact, Humane Vitae um, spells this out, that it is a reasonable um, thing to do. It's just that, and again, Humane Vitae says this, and the church has been saying this for 2,000 years, you have to do this rightly. This whole area of planning uh, families, uh, planning births and postponing uh, pregnancies, it has to be rightly understood that the gift is from God, uh, husband and wife are stewards of their um, marital relationship and of the gifts of love and life. And uh, and so trying to work within that plan and being mindful of the Lord's wishes for their marriage, it, it, it's got to be done in that way where they're not harming anything that God has given them. And natural family planning methods are the ethical methods, actually the only family planning methods that do no harm to God's plan. They don't insert uh, any barriers. They don't uh, include any chemicals. And let me just say a little sidebar about contraception. Hormonal contraception, uh, that's a class of dangerous drugs for women. And women really need to get up to speed with how these things can harm uh, their bodies. In fact, just a little while ago, um, uh, a group of Catholic scientists have been petitioning the FDA to put black box warnings on uh, hormonal contraception for the many, many side effects, including breast cancer, uh, liver tumors, um, Crohn's disease, a, a whole number of autoimmune uh, illnesses that can happen to some women on this medication. In fact, the FDA begrudgingly uh, acknowledged in May 2022 that there is a link to breast cancer, and they changed their prescribing protocols that they are requiring those drug companies to now follow. So that's a win. But women in general don't commonly know these things because their medical professionals, their healthcare uh, professionals do not commonly follow this information. So we've got lots of work to do to help people, help them understand what God gave us, help them understand what the methods are, and help them understand why uh, hor uh, hormonal contraception and indeed any contraception is really not good for them. Absolutely. Teresa, thank you so much for bringing all of that up and to speaking with us about all this. We really appreciate it. God bless you.